start a Facebook group, okay? And write a mission statement. You know, I'm interested in filming the police to keep them accountable, but I want to do it in a non, you know, something, paraphrase me, but mm -hmm. I want to do it in a non-confrontational way, mm -hmm. and uh, I like the idea of civic engagement, and, uh, you know, if you're interested in participating or uh, going out on patrol with me, you know, contact me at this email address. Just a, a, a brief little paragraph explaining, mm -hmm. you know, that you're not you're not going to interfere with the police and um, you're interested, that your slant, your, your mission statement is to hold police accountable, but to do it in a non-confrontational way. And people will, re re will respond to that, you know. So start a Facebook group, even if they're even if no one's going to be on the group except mm. you in the beginning, it doesn't matter. Just write that little mission statement. That's what Carrie and I did. Um, I will send you a link to it so you can check it out. Mm. Uh, you can embed under this when you share this on the interweb. Mm -hmm. You can look at my mission statement and, you know, uh, if you like it, you know, paraphrase it. But that, that's basically uh, what you have to do. And to starting out... You just need to hang out until you get that one guy that's going to do it or that one girl that's going to do it with you because I really don't recommend doing too much of it alone, you know, not when you're first starting because you're not so confident in it. Mm -hmm. And police will, you know, there's a lot of stuff that police can do that seems not right, but it, that's just the way the law rolls. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when they're interacting with you, like, for instance, I, I'll give a quick example. Okay, so let's say hypothetically that I'm cop watching in California. Now I'm from Oregon, but I know California's laws a little uh, uh, pretty well. I know Oregon's laws pretty well. Now, silence is consent, legally speaking. Now I'll say that again: your silence equals consent. Legally speaking, I really love the way you come across. You're very well spoken. You're intelligent. You're, uh, I feel your sensitivity. This is a very intelligent um, conversation we're having around a very volatile subject. So thank you. Right on. Yeah, well, I think it's important that we retain our humanity when we're uh, staring into the face of the opposite of it. You know, that's you know, the, I think things like compassion. Uh, sensitivity, uh, being able to not allow your ego to make you come off as aggressive is a, is a, a powerful tool. Mm. You know, it, it's, it's important. Mm. So here's the thing. If cops are in, in most states, the U.S. Constitution has been defined as, uh, cops having the legal right to pat you down for weapons for their safety. So that means they can run their hands along the outside of your clothes and around your waistband and make sure that there's no bulges there where you could be holding, you know, a holstered gun or a knife, right? That's That's been upheld by many appellate court decisions or the state court, court decisions saying that police have a constitutional right to, you know, have a work environment where they're safe, you know, that, that, that the potential for them to die is diminished. And that's reasonable. I think that's reasonable. If I'm a stranger and I'm walking up on a cop scene or if they pull me over or whatever, you know, or uh, and, and I have to get out of the car, there's certain situations where you're, you can be legally ordered to get out. Or if I'm just walking down the street and, and the cops, you know, are questioning me, but they're not putting handcuffs on me and they're standing right beside me, it only takes a couple seconds to pull a knife out and stab someone. You know, mm -hmm. and then, you know, the cops did, you know, so I think it's perfectly reasonable for their, them to interpret the law in a manner that says that they can pat you down for weapons. Sure. So that's the same in California and where, uh, where you're at and in Oregon where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the trick. If you do not say to the officer, I do not consent to a search of my person or my property. You don't have to say it uh, in those exact words, but mm. you do have to state that I do not consent, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you don't uh, say you don't consent, mm -hmm. when they're patting you down for weapons, they can stick their hand in your pocket. Mm. And if they pull out something that happens to be illegal, right? Okay. You can be, they can use that as evidence. Mm -hmm. You know, hypothetically speaking, you know, there's something in the law called the fruit of the poison tree. Now, that uh, long story short, what this means, uh, what uh, fruit of the poison tree is, is that if 
police gather information or evidence of a crime in an illegal manner, your lawyer is going to more than likely move to suppress that evidence, meaning the jury won't ever be allowed to know that that was in your pocket. Mm -hmm. But if you just silently stand there and the cop goes through your pockets and pulls out, you know, uh, hypothetically any anything, you know, there's all sorts of things that can land you in jail for, you know, a couple of years that seem innocuous. Like, mm. if you have a pill bottle that's got someone else's name on it, you know, say you were, you know, throwing out the trash for your grandmother and you have, like, you know, a, a bag of garbage in the back seat and the, the garbage bag has pill bottles with, uh, with her prescription on it, mm. you can go to jail for a felony. Wow. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, it, 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 and, and the police pull you over and they say, oh, you know, uh, they just uh, ask you for ID and then they open your car door. Uh, while 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 they have your idea and they start going through the bag, yeah. if you don't say I don't consent, you've committed a felony right there. Wow! There's like uh, there's that there's hundreds of, of thousands of municipal codes. There's hundreds of thousands of federal laws. There's tens of thousands. Uh, uh, no, th th there's uh, probably a million uh, uh, state laws. Hmm. You know, so if they invented somehow an AI computer that could watch someone 24 hours a day and and, and uh, follow them, mm. your average person commits hundreds and hundreds of crimes a day. We just don't even know what they are. That's how many... We, we literally exist in a society that has more laws than people. Well